Hello, 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 everybody. Good morning to you all. All right, so today I'm going to look at the national finance concept, okay? That is time value of money. And I'll look at a few, and we bring this to the end. Actually, the, um, the notes or the documents or the, the notes being used are very, very simplified. So it's so explanatory. Wow, how? Whilst you are like, listening to me, just be willing to take your time and then you understand it perfectly. I might not read everything right, but then I might move fast for time sake, but then they are very explanatory. We are good to be able to understand what's perfectly. All right, so we have time value of money. What's time value of money? The concept of time value of money is foundational finance. It reflects the idea that money available to be is worth more than the same amount in the future due to its potential and capacity. Okay. The time value of money just makes us, it just tells us that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in what three years. Because for various factors like inflation, interest rate changes, and all that, because the things we were building yesterday. Or two days ago, cannot buy the same amount of goods that you would have wanted two days ago today. Okay, so if you have things you want to buy, five pennies, probably well, could have bought it um, yesterday or two days ago. But today, come buy, come only buy four. That is time value of money. And then we have some um, um, concepts and the time value of money, okay, that we take into consideration. And these are the present value, the future value, discounting, compounding, annuities, and perpetuities. And there are some, um, there are formulas to back all these, okay. So the first one is present value. Present value is a current value of a future sum of money or stream of cash flows given a specified rate of return. So present value just means that how much is your thing during your thing plus tomorrow, right? How much input is how much of your thing, the things you be having tomorrow be worth today? Okay, that's present value. So you want to see then the current value of your future amount. If you expect that everything um, thing is time, you'll be getting 50,000 cities. Your present value just wants to know how much it will be worth today, taking into consideration um, the weight of return. If you were to invest some amount of money to get there, the formula for present value is. Um, the future value times one plus r, which is the power n. Okay, so present value is equal to the future value times one plus r, which is the power n. Okay, yeah, so that's the problem of present value. So I just want to just tell you, I just assume that you want to invest your money, right? You want to invest that. Um, Future cash flows or the future cash flows. Right? And then you want to bring it to these things. How much will it be? Right? So, for instance, you have 10 cities and then you, you invested it into, um, maybe you put it into a bank, a savings account. They give you an interest rate. And it's for 10 years. So after the 10 years, right, you got your money by 10,000. But we have Someone doesn't know how much you started with, right? So the person just wants you to bring it to back to today's things, right? To see whether it's still worth it to know it because money today is worth more than money in three years' time. Also, okay. factors like inflation and others. So, just like I said, present value supports the future value times one plus R is to the power A. Where P is the present value, F is the future value, R is the discount rate, and N is the number of periods. Okay. And then the future value. So now I'm looking at future value. 
Mutual value is the value of a current asset at a mutual date based on an assumed good, an assumed rate of good. So we have an amount today, and then we want to check how much it will be worth in 10 years' time if we want to invest it at maybe 5%. That's basically what future value is. We want to know, to in the name tells you future value, we want to know how much your money or test with the bullet in 10 years, you went to invest it or want to put it in a venture that has a rate of return, okay, a particular rate. Okay. So future value is about to present value times one plus our R in a case where it's just a year, the future value is equal to the present value times one plus hours per quarter in case that Number of years like 10, 5, 3, okay, yeah. So the same way, every is a future value, if is a present value, that is the interest rate, and any the number of periods. So we have an example here that says investment in Ghanaian treasury bill. Okay, so suppose you invest 10,000 in a Ghanaian treasury bill, that pays an annual interest rate of 8% for three years. To calculate the future value, just you just substitute into the formula. So the future value is equal to your present value times one plus average per power n. And then um, present value, which is the money you have today, is 10,000, right? They want to invest it into a treasury bar to rate of 8%. So our R is the 8%. And then our N is the number of periods or number of years, which is what three years. So when you calculate it, you get your 12,597.12 and talk to such which means that in three years' time, that you'll be getting 12,597.12 if you invest this asset into trade you bill at a rate of 8%. And okay. the example, assume you plan to save 5,000 annually for retirement for the next 20 years. And then when it's an annual return of 7%, then the future value of this annuity can be calculated using the future value of annuity. Um, let me talk about annuity. We look at this example. It is just okay. So, how much you can pay? Weekly, daily. Um, depending on what you want. Okay, so annuity just means equal payments, uh, payments as regular intervals. Okay, so suppose that you say, that, okay, every year I'll invest 5,000 um, into maybe my pension plan, okay, for the next 20 years. And then I spend 7% uh, rate of return. So how much would you like it? So we have the formula for that. So the first formula is when the money is together up front. Okay, so 10,000 up front. But you have another formula for the annuity that when you are paying the same money, um, when you are paying the same uh, money into uh, how should I put it? So we are putting the same money. Um, how should I put it? When you are putting this five thousand into the, the savings account, right? So I'm putting five thousand every year. It has a different formula. Let's look at it. So we have um, the future value of payment is the payment of the annual payment, which is PMT, right? And then the, you, you multiply it by 1 plus R is the bar N minus 1 divided by R. So this is the formula. It's the formula there. So you just want to know how much you earn if you want to invest money annually into a fund. So you know like a one-time deposit, but then regular interval deposit. Okay. So the future value of annuity right, is equal to your and five thousand. So the five thousand annual money will be put in into the fund. Your rate was seven percent. The years is twenty. So this formula substitution, and then you get your answer. 
All right, so just check the answer for me. Okay, probably, I'm sure it's correct, but then just in case. Okay, all right. So we have this counting and compound. So all what we are doing, we see we could solve present value, solve future value. So one has to do with this counting, and the other has to do with compounding. So this counting, the process of determining the, the present value of the future amount. So the present value, what you are doing, it is counting. The future amount. Okay, so the compounding is the process of the time, the future value of a present amount. I apply interest rate. Okay, so let's look at the future value. And the future value is what you are compounding because you want to see how much you get in a um, particular period, right? In three years and four years, and so you are adding on the present value at this point and bringing it back to this or this part. So, compound interest on savings account. So, this is an example. So, in a deposit 2000 in a savings account with an annual interest of 5%, compounded annually for 10 years. And so, we have the which is the same formula. So, it's the equation of value times 1 plus R, which is the power N, and then 3000 is our present value. Which is a one time deposit. Five percent is the PR, which is our interest rate. Then 10 is the number of years. And then you get your answer. Then you go to loan amortization. It's also an example. You take out a loan of 550000 with an annual interest of 6% to be repaid in monthly installments over five years. The monthly payments can be calculated using the formula for the present value of annuity. Just like we have um, the future value of annuity, we have what the present value of what annuity formula. And this one, this time around, we want to know the annuity itself, right? We want to know the present value. So, okay, um, and maybe have 50,000, right? But I want to invest into maybe. I took a loan of 50,000, okay? And then the rate of interest is 6%. I have to pay it every month over five years. You want to know how much you want to pay every month. But annuity is just regular payment. So every month, how much do you want to pay? And then look at the present value, how to find the present value of annuity in the previous um, slides, right? So you just have to do change of subjects. And that is the formula here. Okay, so that the present value is equal to the annuity payment is equal to the present value times your weight times your one plus R to the power n. Divide all by one plus R to the power n minus one. All right, so that's basically for um the formula for the annuity in terms of what present value because you took a loan, you took out a loan. Five pounds, so which is present to the money today, to date, like to the money today, 50,000. So we are using the present value formula to find the annuity. If, like, the, the money we are taking to be in the future, then you would use the future value of what annuity. So that's, that's a value take your time. We're not going to record this take And this formula substitution, change of subject. All right, so in this question, See, we have monthly, so we're looking at compounding. So, the first one also can at compounded annually. So, we just the normal future value formula. But now, we want to find the amount I'll be paying every month. Let's be careful with this one. So, to me, so since the interest rate is percent is annual, that to bring it to every month thing, okay? That's why we have here down here where R is the monthly interest rate to so 0 0.06 divided by 2. Once every month, we are paying an interest of 0 0.005, right? This is approximately 0.5% every month. And then the number of total, you know, N will just be the years, just five years, because now we are paying it every month. So it means that they are going to pay it 60 times. So that's the number of periods. So in a situation where you have, um, 
maybe monthly, quarterly, same, um, same annually. Then the other one use the normal feature of a report. But since this one, there is kind of like a monthly payment, like a regular payment, which are not payments once, only a yearly, but then um, monthly, quarterly, you need to want to take the concentration there. Period in the okay. So now you have five years, but then monthly you have 12 months in a year because you are paying it every month. You write and stuff in the system. Suppose you are paying it semi annually, you have only um, two, you pay it twice in a year, so it's only five times two. It's quarterly, you pay it four times in a year, and usually five times four. So that's how it works, okay. And then the rest of the week, you can substitute it in the formula. Then we have annuities and perpetuities, okay? For annuities, the definition, a series of equal payments made at regular intervals, just like I said, they have the ordinary annuity payments are made at the end of each year. We have annuity to the payments are made at the beginning of each year. So all these are just um, means that you can make annuities. Then you can search more. And that is not just about this listening, I also also research, okay. So we also want to understand how to get the ordinary annuity. Okay, just check the annuity due, just check. It's just an additional uh, variable to a formula. It I wanted to search, okay. So perpetuities yeah. a type of payment that continues in terms So we are paying and paying till we die. Okay, so the if you want to find the present value of that annuity, it's just the payments you are making regularly and then the interest rate give you the present value of that opportunity amount you are paying. Okay. Then the payments, so the, the PMT just are not payment, like I said, are the discount rate. So, for example, calculating perpetuity. So, if you have almost thousand annually forever. The discount rate is five percent. The present value of that perpetuity is one thousand divided by five percent, which is twenty thousand. This is just from now, right? Yes. So because you paying the amount every year to you die, right? You don't know. It's not like it's it. You know the end. Don't know the end to say that okay. You want to use the normal present value formula where you 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 factor in the number of years. Since we don't know. It's just your present value, right? Your the, the it's just the annuity that the amount payment you are making divided by your five percent to get out twenty thousand. Right. So retirement annuity. Suppose you want to receive fifty thousand annually for twenty years. After retirement, you have make your annual interest rate of six percent. I use the present value of the annuity to determine how much you to save. So the value of annuity is what is here, which is the present. So the PMT is the annual payment, annual payment. We base the formula for finding the present value of annuity. The, the annual payment divided by your your arm, which is your interest rates, and then one minus one over two minus one plus five second. So now the formula for finding the present value of annuity. So um, we see we want to receive it to thousand annually for 20 years after retirement, right? With an interest rate of six percent. They want to find the uh, present value. So it's like every year we're seeing 50, 50, 50, 50, for 20 years. So all these money salaries, how much would they be worth in two days? So if you told the person, okay, I don't want to receive a data, data any here. Give everything together to K. So how much would it be worth? That is what this is talking about, okay? So instead of receiving fifty thousand, fifty thousand or twenty years, come see everything to be which is five hundred and seventy three thousand plus, okay. Yeah. So this you just have to take your time and then write okay. writing, taking notes. All right. Then we have applications and Ghanaian contests. So we have the real estate in the business. An example, so scenario, a Ghanaian real estate investor 
is evaluating whether to purchase the property for 200,000. That is expected to generate 15,000 in annual rental income for the next 10 years. So by applying the present value of annuity from the investor can determine if the investment is worldwide given a discount rate of 7%. So that's why you can try your hands on that, right? Which will uh, help, I think, um, So this one only changed it. So it's supposed to be on five three five three instead of this. Okay, then I want to change it when I corrected the the calculations. So it's just a type. Okay, so it, uh, this changes from given nevertheless, <coughs> the answer will still be less than two hundred thousand. So it makes the investments why not just these are the situations. Okay, so I the you are a real estate investor and I very much have to buy the property for two hundred thousand. It's expected to generate fifteen thousand in annual return in fourteen years. It means that when you buy the property and then you rent it to people every year you can receive fifteen thousand from the next ten years, okay. Uh -huh. The next thing is at a rate of seven percent. So if every year we are going to and push it down and say, okay, I want to receive all the money today, not every year. I want to see, okay, if I want to check whether if the amount that you receive today, what if you will set your investment in that property? Okay, so that's basically what it is. This formula way. So just have to sit down the formulas one to write them. And then over it. These are just examples to help you understand better. And then that was the YouTube and YouTube example, and then the explanation. And you can put it on. So it's a summary down there. At the time when you manage a critical concept, that's underlying many financial decisions. And it's very true. It runs through many financial decisions. Even in school, when we are learning, and business finance, business finance one, finance two, you see it is there, they learn investment fundamentals is there. So time value of money is very critical. That is why we are want you to understand the time value of money. So just take your time and then relax and then the, the notes or what you are the slides you are seeing they are very comprehensive. Just take your time, pause the video and then read it and then understand it. I hope the little explanation I've added to it. So we have to extend 10. Okay. So understand the relationship between fixed and return is very fundamental. But when you are investing, when you are investing, you want to understand what's the risk involved, what is the return involved. Okay. So for some people, because of these books and returns, uh, people don't want to invest in them. They don't want any risk. Okay. So we just want to understand what risk and return are. So mm -hmm. investors need to balance the potential for higher returns with associated risks. And so this session was about the types of risks, the risk return trade off, and the methods for measuring risks, including standard deviation and data. So we we'll delve into this concept with a detailed explanation in the samples, including those relevant to Gaia. So the, the book I'll be putting on the page, okay? The book also has all the list and no examples. So you have to do it also. If you are only if you are really interested in so then and want to really learn, then you need to also add the book to it, okay? You need to make it on the book. Okay. So let's look at that two times on this. They are the systematic ways in the mirror. They are unsystematic. So what is the systematic ways? So the systematic the systematic ways is that is that kind of way that affects um the ways that affect a business and is related to the market. It cannot be eliminated. So it's like the risk is, is coming from the market, it's coming from the macro economy. Okay, so you can't change it as a business. You can't control inflation as a business. You can't control political instability in the business, in the 
in the economy when they come to. So things are very risk that businesses face that they have no control over. So with these risks, they don't have control over. You just pray that things go better in the economy, but you don't have control over them. Okay. Then the unsystematic risks, they are the risks that they are specific to the particular campaign or industry. So maybe the business <clears throat> can have operational risks or maybe in terms of the risks that maybe an employee will take your money, an employee will make you go bankrupt, or a customer will not pay, this and that. They are all specific to a particular campaign. In industries, so not every industry has affected by the same risks. Some are... Some are... Um, some have more risks, others have less risks. Okay, like the oil company, oil industry, they are more risks, especially when prices are changing, it's affecting really. That is why the fuel prices are going up a lot. That okay, yes, and then to affect their sales and all that. There are other factors that can affect every industry and based on them. But then this risk can be diversified, right? Can eliminate this risk through proper diversification. Right, like you manage your changes, product records, helping specific needs. You can really manage this way. This was if we diversify properly. Okay, so yes, these are examples of the systematic works and of the systematic works. So let's return to So we know we create this concept that the more you the higher your risk, the higher your return. Okay. The higher your risk, the higher it is. So if you are willing to risk more, you're willing to gain more. Okay. Some people are not willing to risk more. So they can't, they, they are not expected to gain more. The higher your risk, and the higher your return as a principle. We have types of investment. So different, different assets that we have, each of them have their it's return, return, return relationship. Okay, so you can do through them. You have treasury bills, government bonds, they have low risk and then low return. But that you don't have any risk or looking at the DD and that happen. You realize that government bonds can also have risk, but then they are low cost because it's with the government. Okay, and they return to be slow compared to investing in stocks that have high risk. And the risk that the value of the stock will go down, very go down much because of maybe particular news that comes out there and also gives high return especially when good news comes and then people are buying the prices are rising and if you're getting the return the plus dividend okay all right so we have examples down here in ghana which you can read and then understand so measuring rex okay so we have the standard deviation and this measures the total rex Okay, it measures two tariffs, so it's equal both systematic and an unsystematic risk. And it's just to check the amount of variation or um, volatility between or volatility of an asset. Okay, so to know the volatility of an asset. So, some deviation in the formula we have the X minus the. Expert. So, you just want to know the volatility in the returns of an asset. Okay. So, maybe if the asset keeps right. so it was maybe first it gave 5% return, second year 2%, third year 3%. We just want to check the volatility in that. Is the asset is volatile? Is it risky? Right? Because it's very risky, it means that it's, it's return will be just going up and down, going up and down. Down, 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 up, up, up. So just want to check that volatility in that or the variation in the returns of the asset. Then the formula is just there. So this two formula work. Just have to understand the formula. So the X by just the mean of the value. So if you have a number of returns for a particular year, you just have to what um, add them and divide by the number. So if there are five years in work, year one. 5%, year 20%, year 20%, year 4%, and they are all returns. You divide by 4 to get your mean, which is the S bar. Okay, so that one mean is, and then the N is the number of values in the world. Right, so, volatility of stock returns. 
So calculating the standard deviation of monthly returns, well, you can try this out. Go to the standard banner stock exchange, get a campaign and see if you can get the returns for a particular period, a particular month, and then check the volatility. I think that will help. So we have beta, yeah, so beta down here. Also another measure of um, risk. They want to check a stock volatility related to the entire market. Okay, so it is not just only the, the stock and its retains, but then we are looking at the stock in the market. So is the stock uh, following the market strength or it's going opposite to the market? But beta greater than one indicates that the stock is more volatile than the market. So the market is doing well, the um, stock will be doing better. The market is not doing the, the stock will be doing worse. And that. So they want to check the volatility and how the stock right, changes related to the entire market. And the formula is the covariance of the returns of the market and the um, returns of the stock. So it's actually comma, not mine, sorry. It's comma. I think there was typo here. So it's comma. So covariance of the return of the assets relation to the market divided by the variance of the market, right? So if you want to how to calculate the covariance, then the variance that want to just have to um, check it out online. Okay. And in the book too, like it's in the in the book. You don't have to give you everything else, also search the book and get some understanding. Okay. So we just um long from now, it will be will be which we can just get it in the book. Okay, so if you know the covariance, for instance, if you just move the covariance up front and the variance, then can easily calculate the beta. Like you are supposed to calculate the variance of the returns of the market. Then you would have to go to the right form you have to do that. All right. So we have portfolio beta calculation. So that one is when you have different different stocks together. Okay, you have different stocks available, and then you want to um check the beta of the entire portfolio because, as I said earlier, you can eliminate your own systematic risk to good diversification. So in terms, you want to. Get different different diversification just means putting different different things together, right? Just so that you'll be able to diversify your risk. So you check the correlation between them, whether if this is going up, it's going down, or this is going down, this is going up, or they move together. So yes, basically what um a portfolio diversification is. The problem will move, we will check deeper into that later on. And so I just want to check the beta. Okay, so if you have three stocks and then they're viewing the beta in their weight, if you get to get the beta of the entire portfolio, not just the individual stock, it just, it's just multiplication. Okay, so you multiply, so you multiply each stock, each stock's beta by its weight, and then you add them. So that's what is up here. And I think it's very simple. And then application and investment decision. So probably you can get through this. So this application. So this is a scenario. Evaluating an investment project in commerce for a renewable energy sector, assessing the risk estimated return and determining the risk trade return. If the risk trade, if the risk return trade of is acceptable. So if you are giving more risk. I'm giving you more return for me. If you are giving more risk and the return is low, no, 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 I don't want this, okay? And then if you are giving less risk and return is high, you can't opt for that. But sometimes you have to check for that too, because if your risk is slow and they're giving you so much high return, you have to check whether it's, it's actually a good. That's why it's a good investment. That's why I never like low risk, low return, high risk, high return, and it's going to make a return. But then there can be other cases where they are not supplied to be careful with that also. So these are just scenarios, right? But 
and just go through push the video and just check and understand what's the scenarios are just, are just scenarios examples which happen in real life when you are become a financial analyst or an investment banker then you are into um you have clients from different different industries that want you to assess whether they should invest in this kind of securities assets or this particular kind of markets right and then you have to take into consideration all these things this is just a great time to say let's understand how it would go about okay. then there's also another scenario up there then summary of the list and it's in trade they are more in a sense just just to give you a fair idea and then let's get interested in learning more about this finance really interesting but then you just have to be focused and then willing to learn. All right. So um, I think we have done the first aspect, the second aspect, which is the risk and return. This will be the last one, like the situation I mentioned earlier. So we wanted to ask to add it to it. So the education is a key strategy in control management that involves spreading your investments across various assets to reduce risk and return. Um, Risk and enhanced returns. So this section will cover the benefits of diversification, different diversification strategies, and portfolio theory. We'll delve into this course of detail, explanations, and examples, including those relevant to buy. So benefits of diversification, risk reduction. Okay, so when you spread your your money across different different industries, different different assets, then you put them together, the entire rest of the portfolio will be what um reduced because if one is not doing well, I mean that I will be doing better to offset that kind of what risk price has. So the entire risk of the portfolio is usually reduced by because of diversification. Okay, so we have an example here. If you if a portfolio contains stocks from different sectors like technology, healthcare, and consumer goods, a downturn in one sector may be mitigated by the stability of good in others. Okay, yeah. So return enhancement, that's the second benefit. Diversification can lead to more stable returns over time. Why does not guarantee against losses? It reduces the volatility of retains. Okay, so the entire portfolio can be a particular retain. So instead of using money only stocks, where the returns can change because it's high risk, right? Can put stocks, bonds, treasury bills, real estate together. Okay, and then the volatility which the, the entire portfolio will change because the one is offsetting the other, so the retains. Um, the entire portfolio may not be changing so much. The third benefit is preservation of the capital. You're not putting all your capital into one basket. You're not losing everything. Uh, so at least your capital is still see because one in one return is moving, the other is there to push in it. So your capital is still there. You're putting everything to stocks and when the stock market crashes, flows in the commercial company. This kind so that if this is not doing well, this can help. So diversification uh, strategies, diversification strategies, so asset allocation, definition, distributing investments across different asset classes such as equities, first income, related equities. So that's asset allocation. So you are looking at different different asset classes, putting your money into all these different different, different asset classes. To run geographical diversification, you spread your money across different geographic regions to reduce countries with big risks. So for instance, you have money, you want to put it in Ghana. In US, in UK, because the climate in Ghana is now picking up. It doesn't do well at all. So at least if you have investments in the UK, the US, it's going to set the risks in Ghana and it can help you. All right, so we have sector diversification to where you put some various sectors in a critical economy. You can put it only in one industry. You can put it in a fabric, you can put it in the um, industries that prospect the place. So I mean, it's your money will be. Secured. So investment style diversification too, so including 
different investment styles, such as looking at their growth, their value, their income, and all that. So you can combine different different stocks. Maybe this stock, for instance, you are not you don't want to, you are not interested in putting money in different different countries or you want to put money in different different asset classes. You want only stocks. You don't put all the stocks in really one um, company, maybe only in um, I don't know the company, only one company on the stock market. I can put some small entities, one echo box, one JCB, one in total, one in gross, one in this, just so that at least if this one is going up, and this one give it dividend, it will all combine and help you. Also, you can see that the situation where you load your investment in different, different currencies to so hedge against risks. So like our currencies in Ghana is the, the depreciation. It's depreciating capital. So money into S or in rules, right? Which we are not advising. Because if you put the money there, you are affecting it even more. But then it's just an example to make an understand currency diversification. So portfolio theory, modern portfolio theory by Harry Markowitz in 1980. I also read more about him. He also talked about diversification and you know, all that. Um, so he said that um, if you want to reduce uncertainty in investment, diversification is very key. You can read about this. Right? And then you have efficient point A. So it will present a set of optimal portfolios that offer the highest expected return by defined level of risk. So let's say there's a particular risk that, okay, we have the risk is low. So you have different different portfolios there. So Efficient point I just show you which aspect of your portfolio to choose that will get the highest return in terms of this low risk defined or high risk defined. That's just what efficient point is. And it is a line that represents a set of portfolios, right? But the maximum return for a given level of risk or the minimum risk for a given return level. Right? So, that's basically, you can read more on that, I think, in the book. All right, so I mean, we go this. What just we just want to let you appreciate certain points from certain finance so that we will be sure of finance is interesting. I just need to read more and more. And more. I also have something called the capital asset pricing model, which a lot of investors and investment analysts use. Right, when they want to analyze the retain that they are they expect to retain right, from an asset, okay. And then the formula is down there. We have the expected return of the on the investment, which is E that is E R I for expected retain, and R F is the risk free rate. So, for instance, in a particular um, country. There is a free rate that is when usually the treasury bill rate that is used, or in some countries that you will use the treasury bond, at the yield of the treasury bond as the free rate. Because in your crowd, at least that's when they you get your money. So if everything, the, the everything is basically, anything happens, at least you get something. So you don't expect to invest your money and then there's nothing you get. So if Nothing happens at all. If they say you don't get anything at all in relation to what you want to want, they get the free rate. Yeah, so that's basically that's what the capital is. And you just want that. When you just need to know which one is the expected return, the B, I, the beta, which we looked earlier, the R, and also expected market return, so the entire market for stocks. The particular return and it's expected. Okay, and then is when you can um, look through your know, other some resources. I don't know if can um, help access the outside resources that they use to get this um expected return for the entire market and all that. I think you can also search for that. We have an example of diversification, which is here you can read through and understand. You just through the um, competition, putting money there, putting money that, put some money, put some that, and then just help you to appreciate the concept. Right. So, in case maybe you are trading, you have shares and all that, just know that you don't put all your money in the basket. 
let him come out. Even if you want to put him in only the stock market, this fight within the stock market, the stock market is doing well, those pay dividend, and then you can put the points on you, and then you maximize your team. So that's the, the end of today's lesson. Look at time value of money, which is very key. The ritual to all finance things. For example, which is very key because finance basically is about also looking at investments and investment that risks and they are retained. You have to look at the trade-offs in them and they make good decisions. You look at what diversification is a very key, which is very key because Portfolio optimization of all Don't put your money around the schedule. Diversify as much as you can. Eliminate your own systematic risk. Even if you cannot eliminate your systematic risk, you can eliminate your own systematic risk. You can turn risk in your portfolio to be reduced. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you like and share to other people. Then read a book which is known as which is called. There's a course of corporate finance. What's the context in there? Yes, you have access to it. And then I think it's a way. If I search it on my principles of corporate finance, and you get a book on that, PDA book on that, then you read and understand. So I think bring this to an end. Thank you.